Uh, well, I'm Will Ivinson. I'm from Waka Waka Country, which is up around the Gainda region. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been a public servant for over 26 years. Uh, I've been in TMR for about two and a half years now, uh, almost three. Kind of complex question this one a little bit. Um, there's uh, probably a whole range of aspects that need to be looked at uh, in relation to recruitment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Uh, from not just the offerings that we have of entry pathways, um, which is just getting your foot in the door, or traineeships, grads, those sorts of things, but also how we provide an opportunity to engage and grow careers once they're here. Uh, but also, um, how do we get people into the front door that are at higher levels? Uh, and that's been a big challenge for the public sector across uh, a number of years now. So what uh, we try and do with TMR at the moment is we've changed the way we've worded a lot of our uh, role descriptions. Um, so using very neutral kind of language, um, simple language, simplistic uh, forms for recruitment. Uh, and what that does is it actually tells people exactly what a job is about, what a job is going to do. Um, and that allows people out in the community to actually go, well, whether or not I want to do that role. Uh, since I've come on board is we've re redesigned cultural capability itself so we're actually looking to engage more with traditional owners to provide um, the protocol training back to TMR staff uh, so as an example we've taking, taken uh, our graduates we've taken senior leaders out to Manjuraba or Strabrak Island as people know it um, and uh, they've gone out on country there with the elders uh, and learnt not just about what the country shows, but about the impact of policy on people and how, I suppose, the historical impact of Queensland government policy has uh, impacted the local people there. Uh, and if we can establish that across all regions within Queensland, so people are engaged with their local traditional owners and understanding the impacts of government policy within that local area, uh, they themselves become better public servants because they understand the impacts. There's a lot of avenues for people to be uh, engaged in working in their own country, if you like. So we obviously have a lot of infrastructure projects uh, and a lot of people on the ground within those projects. Um, so our, I think the big thing here for us is how we influence our third party uh, contractors in that space um, when we're partnering with with big organisations to build a road somewhere or build a bridge somewhere those sorts of things uh, engaging and developing local capabilities and capacity for employment and long-term employment so we've got a real opportunity to influence that strongly across the sector um, I think you'll find a lot has changed but a lot hasn't either um, the concepts and some of the issues we're still talking about today in 2021 uh, have been around since you know the the 80s, uh, if you like, and um, uh, you know, growing recruitment, growing career career pathways, those sorts of things, breaking down systemic racism and within organisations. Uh, so those things are still there, and they're still a challenge for uh, particularly for First Nations people today. Um, as we walk between what we class as two worlds, if you like. It's uh, our own community and Aboriginality or Torres Strait Islander uh, nationality uh, and the world of the public service and, and the government in general um, and your expectations uh, to deliver in that space um, plus the expectations that community put on you as a public servant. Um, so it, it, the challenges is always there and still there um, but we have made quite a bit of progress where um, people are a lot more open uh, to growing their own cultural knowledge now, particularly non-Indigenous Australians. Uh, they want to know more. Um, and you see that a lot within uh, our younger generations coming through. Um, there's a, a level of understanding there that um, they need to know more, need to know the history of this country uh, and the history of our people, uh, which is great. It's just great to be able to share that and have people 
keen to ask questions and keen to grow their knowledge. Um, and that's how we break down the silos and barriers through education. There's a lot going on at the moment around uh, constitutional recognition, sovereignty, where that stands. Um, Queensland Government has their own treaty process uh, unpacking that. Um, and at the same time, there's um, you know, uh, our uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Partnerships Department is running their local Thriving Communities program as well, which is about building up our, um, our remote, uh, uh, remote regional community areas. Um, so there's a lot of things happening that are converging all at once right now. I think um, where the Queensland government sits is in a, uh, it's in a struggle space, but a very unique space as well. And what, what I mean by struggle space is that um, we've got probably over 300 language groups across Queensland and uh, to establish a treaty in that space is going to take a lot of effort. But the positive is that there's people there willing to make that effort um, and push that agenda. Um, and how that is going to influence uh, federally uh, around constitutional recognition is um, one of those things that is yet to be seen, but uh, we're still pushing for it, you know. So, uh, and when you've complement that with programs like local thriving communities and the growth in those areas, if we can get those things right and we have the conversations happening with the right people, um, then it puts us in a very strong position as a government.